what's up guys welcome to box to box football and i'm back here with jack and um i said i wasn't gonna do this and i really tried to stay away but i just can't right uh and we're gonna talk about arsenal i really 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 tried to stay away from talking about arsenal like after the vrl stuff i generally was off it maybe tuned into some games didn't really care as much and during this window haven't haven't put my time into it compared to what i used to like as a fan and during the preseason games haven't really been engaged but i just couldn't help but see the atrocity that's going on in this transfer window right now and seeing all these crazy rumors crazy decisions being made and just i finally have to talk about it guys you know i i, I didn't want to but i finally have to talk about what in the hell is going on with arsenal because let's break it down so as you all know arsenal finished eighth last season worst finish in the last 25 years or um or so was goal ratio defensively was actually all right but every other type of statistic was just horrendous had, had teams beating us like burnley which which we never lose to but then we get to this upcoming season now and i'm thinking okay stan we all know the problems with stan i'm thinking surely we're going to see this big investment to this team and get us back to where we belong as a football club and that's not just top challenging for top four and that's winning a league and it just seems that we're back in the same circle as Arsenal fans what we're like three weeks left till the league starts we've only made two signings and uh Ben White's probably going to come come in for 50 million but it just feels that we're back in the same circles right now and we're not sure where we're going as a football club and I'm just getting frustrated now Let's just start with what's going on with this goalkeeping situation, Jack. So right. we decided a season ago to let Emmy Martinez go, who was absolutely terrific for um um for three months for us. And we yep. as a lot of Arsenal fans, and even me especially, we're talking about how he should be the number one, he should be the number one. At we least give him a chance. Him, you know? Right. We de- At least we decide we decide to let him go to Aston Villa. Yeah. We only get twenty million for him and we keep Bern Leno as the number one. It's not the worst number one ever, but Emmy Martinez w- w- was better. Now, right now, better player. Martin is, is by far the better player. Yeah. But now, apparently, Leno's going to be out the window. And now we're thinking of bringing in Aaron Ramsdale. I'm like, who makes decisions around here? Like, right. seriously. I'm hearing us linked with, like, Anana. And I'm thinking, like, you made a decision, yeah, a year ago that M- that Burn Leno was your man. Yep. Now you and, and now something happened and he's not your man anymore. I don't know if Bern Leno wants to leave or Arsenal don't want them anymore. I'm thinking, seriously, who makes decisions ar- around here? You know? I'm like, I'm looking at the fact that, okay, we need midfielders. And I'm and, and right. I'm seeing crazy links to Jordan Henderson now. I'm just like, it's it's making me think that really who makes decisions around here and do you have a clue of what you want for uh, Arsenal? Where are the targets at are at? What, hmm. what I'd say, mate, and you know, you know my way I go with this kind of stuff. You don't know what you don't know, right? So what I mean by that is, if Burnt Leno wants to leave, are you really keen to keep a guy who wants to leave? Probably not, right? That's probably the right decision. Get rid of him; it's fine. I think if you're being honest, you tell me if I'm wrong here, because you might know the guy a bit better than me, because you're obviously a fan of the team. I didn't predict predict Emmy Martinez to have as good as a 12 months as he's had. I feel like if I'm being truthfully honest, Jack, we Arsenal fans after he um Bernardo went this down level, against though. no 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 if Bernardo went down against Br- Brighton, we were all scared. Emmy Martinez came in and gave us so yep. much reassurance. We were like, no one actually remembered Bernardo. Like I, I right. remember, I remember he was so good. There was one save against um Liverpool. Where like it was a flex from Trent Alexander Arnold and I'm Emmy Martin somehow got his hand to and I'm thinking like this guy's special playing now from the back he's he's commanding the ball in the, like like in the area the FA Cup final topped it all off the he, the way he commanded um the box the way that he commanded the game I was thinking we cannot let him go we decided to make that decision and a lot of Arsenal fans were definitely against unhappy it, you know. I'm- I would have been against it too, but personally, maybe maybe you had a better read on it than I did. I personally couldn't have predicted the 12 months he's had, personally. He was my goalkeeper of the year. He he won a Copa America, talking a bunch of you-know-what in that penalty shootout, which was amazing. I love that kind of stuff. Love it, right? What I'd also say, defensively, in midfield and in attack, 
you are marketing your players like crazy. Every person who I follow, listen to podcasts, you know, read articles, you name it. You're trying to get rid of Lacazette aggressively. Torreira, obviously Genduzzi's gone through the door. Granite Xhaka to Arsenal is imminent. Um, Willian supposedly wants to leave. There are a lot of players who are going to leave, but they haven't left yet. And in- there's no point in spending all this money on getting the players that your, your the squad clearly needs and the manager and you and the fans, everybody clearly wants if the players don't go out the door. In- now, now that lukonga has gone in, there's going to be a domino, right? Jack is going to go and then hopefully a couple more players will, you know, and I, like I think I said to you, James, come the end of the window, I think a team's going to get desperate and Lacazette will go. But then are you going to have enough time to recruit the replacements? You but know Jack, what I mean? That, that's my biggest problem. Yeah. Right. Running out of time. We 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 could clearly see that Arsenal were going to need a clear up of your Toreros, which I actually liked, your Shakas, your Bellerins, your Lacazette, your Bellerins, winner. another huge one being marketed like crazy. Why are we waiting to three weeks before the window start to ship in that many players? Eddie like like Eddie Ketty and Reese Nelson, um uh what's it? AZ Mate Niles, Shaq, there's like six, seven, eight players who need to be shipped out. But it's yeah. pressure, James, right? Because if you're, if you're a buying club, would you rather do business with an Arsenal who have loads of time and can chill and can assess their options? Or do you want to do business with that club at the end of the window where they're like, oh, fuck it, we'll just take 20% less? You know what I mean? Listen, maybe, again, I don't know everything that goes on there, but I can clearly see a few trends that doesn't make sense. You know? Right. There is no way Arsenal are going to be able to ship out that many players in a space of three weeks. It's not no. happening. The fact no. that I'm seeing players train, like 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 starting off preseason and like all that stuff, is is, is made me feel that it's almost like they they've come to a con- conclusion that if they can't se- uh, sell me, I'll just stay to the rest of the season and just see my contract out and my money. Yeah, you know, I, and I, I don't I, really want to see that. You know, it feels, I can, it it's de- definitely it. Torreira, I think, is alone. I think he's definitely gonna go, but it'll be on a but loan. Like, but like, think about—we just loaned them last season. So how much? So, so how many loans are we gonna get from him? Because it's gonna get to a point. It's gonna be loan, 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 loan. He's gonna go for, 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 for <laughs> turning into turning into Chelsea. You know, um, it, it. Bellerin, I, Bellerin. I think there's probably an outside chance, and there's some decent hope. You know that maybe he'll he'll go out the door. And Lacazette, I've got to be honest, for what Arsenal want, I'm just, I don't know what who that club's going to be, who's going to buy him. Um, Willian, who wants Willian? I mean, you know, unless he goes to, to like a China or a USA or, or a Russian league or something like that, I, I don't know where he's going to make the money he wants. So it's a difficult position, can't lie. But I do get at the point of view that we need to ship, ship players out, but then I need right. to see Arsenal's priorities and where right. they want to target. Yeah, we can clearly see that we need midfielders. We need another 10. We need another um, center midfielders. I'm seeing different sort of links and different sort of players. Someday you, you might get Locatelli, you might get a Hassan Mawar, a Basuma, um, uh, Renato Sanchez, uh, a Ruben Neves. It's like there's too many links and not a definitive target. And it makes right. no sense at this moment talking about who exactly are you going to go for. Madison is also being linked for 17 odd million. It's like, like if you're... Arsenal, we need to command, and I and I don't feel like in this transfer window that we're commanding as much. You know, this Ben White thing, you can clearly see that Brian wanted fifty, and it was almost oh Arsenal for thirty five, then forty, then forty two, then forty five. Like, <laughs> if you want the guy, just pay. Come on, right, you know? right. We need it. Listen, we need a right back, and I'm seeing different links, this and that. Like, find a guy. I was, that's what I was gonna him. say. Like, why is it? Why would you have gone for Tavares? And not a right back. That's one thing that I guess kind of puzzled me a little bit. I mean, I know you you probably still need a backup left back anyway, and obviously he's young, some good upside. But the fact that you signed a backup left back instead of what would probably be a starting right back is a bit surprising. Jack, we could go into the season with just think about it with Bellerin as our only right back, with Kalazanac, Tavares, still there. and yeah. Kieran Tierney as our yeah. left back. How does that make sense? Where does the balance out? Because if we think about it, we still have to ship out Klasenac. Like, there's so much dead wood at this football club that right. it's almost like, can we just get moving? Can, can we again, find a way? But these, but these are problems not from 2021. These are problems for when these contracts were signed. And, and this is something that you and I have agreed on for a long time. Arsenal do not sign clear A players and then Bs and Cs to fill out the squad. They sign just a bunch of B pluses, B minuses, and just hope that it figures itself out. 
And it, that's not the way to run a club. You need a clear starting eleven with maybe a handful of rotation players. And then the rest is just filler, usually with either good experience or good upside. Simple as that. Whereas Arsenal, all of Arsenal's squad, you'd argue, apart from a few exceptions, are all of similar quality. Yeah, Jack, I, listen, I totally agree with you there. If you give me six or seven new players who are better than what we have, and let's say the players we have right now, majority of them are backups, I'll be satisfied yep. with that. I'm not saying yeah. these guys ain't good enough, but the fact of the matter is that what like like what this exact squad that we have right now, it has led us to eighth place. We need a clear upgrade right. from that. We need fresh new faces. I'm all for this thing about we need to stop, especially with Arsenal, stop having players being comfortable. A lot of players, oh, like I guarantee the spot. Like even a player who's it, as it like as great as Kieran Tierney. I'm happy Tavares has come in now. And why? Because he can challenge him and keep him on his toes. And that's something that, like, you watching Arsenal for the past 10 years, it's been like that where players are just a bit too comfortable. I can have two, three bad games and it's not going to affect me. I'm right. looking for competition. I don't want Smith Rowe, who, who has been given the number 10 shirt, and I'm really happy for him. I think he, he's a baller. And I fully, ex like, I fully expect Smith Rowe to go on to be in the England squad for the next... World Cup. I think he's a, he's he's honestly that good. But I want him to be on his toes next season. I want him to know that you have three, four poor games that another number ten is going to come in and take right. the spot. You need everybody on their toes. Even someone like Ab Abamyang, he can't afford to be on and off this many times in a season and not get dropped. You know, these are the type of things that we need to take care of. The threat, the threat needs to be there. I think you, you make a good point with the left back position, and you and I talked about it with Cedric. I don't hate Cedric as a backup right back, sitting on the bench, not going to make too many mistakes. He's not going to set the world on fire, but he's not going to ask for too much money. Decent guy, good pro, good experience, right? But I think the problem is when you blur the lines between who your starter is and who isn't, the left back position is perfect. You just said it. There is no doubt who the starter is there. And you have a guy who can push him, right? But can that be said for the rest of the squad? No. The rest of the position groups? I'm not so sure. You know, for me... I think if you, let's say you're doing a 4-2-3-1, let's just imagine that, you know, say you got Pepe, Smith Rowe and Saka behind Martinelli or something. I think that's pretty Jack, good. Jack, even someone like Bern Leno, he's been on and off this season. And the fact that he didn't have someone until Matt Ryan came in, we had Runison in goal. Of course he wouldn't right. be threatened. The fact that right. we didn't have a suitable competitor for him, he could have like four or five bad games. He's going to have these mistakes and he'd be like, oh, I'm still going to keep my place in the team and it shouldn't be like that you know or, or even even bring your even bring your under 23 keeper up seriously because you know a lot of the time and you've seen it with arsenal over the last year more so than ever the academy graduates have got some have got some stuff and you know arsenal in particular as a squad a lot of academy academy graduates knocking around in there good ones to be fair like we uh we brought in one of our academy graduates in as a goalkeeper like he's oh, yeah? he's, he's a good goalkeeper and had a bit of a howler against <sighs> um Okay, uh, I'll take that, that back then. Birmingham, but like, it's all right. He'll get better. But again, guys. Well, to, to conclude, James, what I'd say, yeah. right, a lot of stuff has to happen before stuff can happen in terms of being proactive. There has to be a lot of exits before there needs to be ins. There's got to be more outs than ins. And unfortunately, before the outs happen, I'm sorry, but I don't see the ins happening. It's just, it's not prudent. It's not, it's not smart business. If you, if you're going to sign, you know, having a bloated squad, you end up running the risk of just screwing yourselves long-term. And, and like, even what, you have a 23 man squad. How many of them can we actually fill up at right. this moment in time? There's going to be a lot of players who are, are, are definitely going to miss out. But again, Arsenal fans, let me know what's going on with this squad issue. Where are these players going to, when are we going to see these players leaving? Also, who are we going to bring in? Three weeks to the Premier League start again. Are we going to get in the seven, eight, like eight to ten signings that we actually need to compete <laughs> at a high level? Please let us know. Who do you think Arsenal sh should bring in, guys? Thank you for watching. This is Box to Box Football. Like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next time.